Hey there, this is Vanessa DeBerlay and today I'm going to show you how to set your YouTube video up for success without trying to be redundant. YouTube is a search engine just like Google is. When you're trying to look for something, people go Google it there. They look in YouTube and they ask questions and then your video pops up or an ad pops up or, or a blog or something like that. And you need to set up your YouTube channel or your YouTube video so that it can be found when that search is being placed. I'm going to show you eight different ways that you can put search engine optimization into your video to help it get found, help it get searched on the platform. Be sure to check out my channel where I talk about turning your passion into profit. And a lot of people say, well, I want to start a YouTube channel, but I just want to share my passion. I don't care if a lot of people find it. Well, you can make money from YouTube off of almost, I'm not saying all, but almost any knowledge that you have or passion and um, there are ways to find out if it is profitable and i do have a new course below go ahead and hit that link and it'll help you kind of dig in and find out is one of your ideas actually profitable but for today's sake we're going to stick with um, creating a profitable video one that's going to be found and one that a lot of people want to view and that's kind of how money is made i've got a video up there where i show you how to monetize your uh, channel if you haven't um, really understand that go ahead and watch that and it'll explain to you how people make money from youtube now again one of the most important things that i think any youtuber can do is more important than even the quality of your video in my opinion is making sure you use specific search engine techniques and make sure it can be found let's get started we're going to start with number one the first thing i want to emphasize to you is that when you get ready to make a video you need to make sure you come up with that key word that you want other people to find you with for instance let's say you're doing a video on how to play the guitar well obviously you want um, the word guitar as one of your keywords that's what you want people to be looking for you may even stretch it out a little bit um, how to play the guitar for beginners and that would make it a long tail keyword and everywhere that you can think of that's what you're focusing on you want to keep repeating yourself saying that within reason you don't want to just um, pile it in there but that's how the algorithm finds you and knows what your video is about YouTube has no way of knowing what's in that video. As far as I know, they don't have people sitting there listening to them. And I don't know if there's anything, um, any artificial, any artificial intelligence out there that can pick up on what you're saying. It may be there, but as far as I know, it's not. So it's up to you to tell YouTube what your video is about. Think of it that way. Now, before you come up with that keyword, kind of do a flip. What would you be asking? What kind of question would you ask if you were going to search for the topic? And that might be it. How to play the guitar for beginners. I'm a beginner. I don't know how to play. How do I do it? And so that would be a good keyword. Now I'm going to give you two examples of how this is used in the title. The title is the number one place that you want to make sure you put that keyword. Here's one example here, how to add a timestamp. So I did a whole video about a timestamp, how to make it. And this video, that word timestamp is my keyword. So you can tell in my description or in my title I have that there so if somebody's looking for that now in that case they need to know what a timestamp is or know that vocabulary um, I could even um, bring it down a little bit maybe I could say something like how to be found on YouTube and then include that timestamp but in this particular video I was trying to make a video for people who knew what it was and they wanted to know how to make it so I was pretty pretty clear about that here's another one I did a video on what are badges on parlor parlor was that uh, social media platform that was really hot there for a while and I don't even know if it's still around but at the time um, they had badges on it and things like that and a lot of people were asking what are those verification badges so parlor was a, actually my keyword and I was expanding on that with the badges but there it is in my title if somebody looked at that they can see exactly what they're looking for no clickbait any of it just be specific about what is in your video because people don't have time to have to try to figure things out number two have those keywords in your description now when you upload a video that's when you're putting your description and all these things in look above one of those sides right look up there and i have a video about how to upload a video and it goes through step by step how to put the description and all these things in if you don't know how 
there's a video up there now in the meantime let's look down here at the description this is what you see when you open up a video um, the description is right below and you want to make sure you put a good description in there now on this one I did not put a very long one but the more you put in there the more you can say the better so that might not have been a good example um, here's another one um, the one about the timestamp I have the word timestamp in there several times um, here's another example from somebody else this is um, final cut pro tutorial from Catherine Manning here's her description so you know basically look around at what other people are doing a lot of times um, a couple little short paragraphs are good I know some people will tell you you know write a book it's up to you I don't know I feel like if you write a book or you write three or four paragraphs and keep saying that word over then you're going to get redundant and say it too much and I think then YouTube will pick up on that too so be careful you want it to look realistic i need to use these words to make the description about my video the third way you make your video searchable is to add tags now lately i've been seeing a lot of videos that are saying these tags don't matter i still put them in there because hopefully they do matter if they don't you're not hurting anything but when you go to upload your video you're going to be asked when you go in and um you're going to be asked to put some tags in so here you go way down here these are some tags that i use for this video i tend to like i tend to prefer long tail tags or keywords because i am a small channel and i can't compete if i just put the word seo in i'm competing with people that have been around for a very long time and they've already have that uh, seo uh, youtube already recognizes them as the channel to go to with that keyword so i try to expand my keywords or my tags um, and have like questions things that people would be searching for i always make my first tag how to add a timestamp to your youtube video that is the title and i always put that as my first one i always put my name and then i will put some other things in there and i try to ask myself what are things people are going to ask this is a way you can ask more questions and you can see the tags that have been picked up they've got some analytics next to them now number four another thing that you can do is create a transcript of your video there are people who are hard of hearing and they cannot hear your video but they want to search for things as well so some people will put closed captioning on their video but if you have something where you're talking a lot consider making a transcript and then that person can open up the transcript and read it you've gotten those videos yourself you know when they say hey do you want to make a million dollars or buy the uh, how would you like to buy the stock my best stock options i get caught on those all the time and then they start showing this god awful video that never seems to end i love it when they say hit this button and read the transcript i would rather read when something gets lengthy like that than to have to sit there and go through it so make sure you make a transcript and add it now youtube has a button where you can go use their transcript but i don't recommend it because it does it's not it's still in the making of being perfected i use a program called temi.com i have it below but you just go there and it i don't think it costs more than a couple bucks each time that you have a transcript now the neat thing about doing that if in the future you make a blog on your video you've got that transcript already there so make sure you have a good filing system and keep it but transcripts will help you be found i promise now one thing that a lot of people do not think about number five is the file name see over here to the right um, it says file name before you schedule or before you post your video you have the ability to change this now some people their file name is the name of the video that they put on it then they um like i use camtasia and i will name my video something that makes it easy for me to find it again so if i'm doing a vlog i'll put vlog in front of it dash and then describe it not the words that i'm going to use when i post it if that makes sense well that's what pops up well you can go in and retype that to match your title it's just one more way that youtube can find you in that within that keyword that you're trying to be searched for it's just one other way that you can be found all right number six you hear about this all the time is your thumbnail now why would that be important the thumbnail is important is because when people are searching for you they they let's let's go in now we're going to do a search i'm going to type in how to um, start playing the a guitar like i had said earlier i like to go into youtube to do my search so i'm going to go into youtube and i'm going to say how to how to play the guitar for beginners now you're going to see all of those different videos pop up you've done it yourself you've done searches there's some ads at the top 
But now I'm going to look at these. Which one am I going to choose? Well, now our visual pops in. Some people maybe don't choose a video based on that thumbnail. Most people do. They're visual. Um, they're going to look at guitar lesson, absolute beginner. All of these are for beginners. Which one am I going to choose? Now, if you notice something, this is my tip for you as far as the thumbnail. Make sure the thumbnail represents what your video is about. So this person here doesn't have any words, but they have a guitar there. And I know that they're teaching me how to play the guitar. Now, if they had a, a violin or, or a piano or something, I might go, well, I might bypass it. So that, that actually is a very good thumbnail up here learn guitar in 10 days so this person's saying i can help you learn it in 10 days this girl here is saying i can teach you one song in minutes so what are you looking for do you want to hurry up and learn a song do you want to hurry up and learn the guitar in 10 days so that this is really important and my advice just make sure the thumbnail represents what you're your video is about. So here's a couple of my examples back here. This one is about timestamps and it says timestamps and I have the YouTube symbol on there. You don't even have to read the title. You can see that it has something to do with YouTube, something to do with timestamps. Um, here's another one, um, Final Cut Pro tutorial. She's going to give you a tutorial on Final Cut Pro. I don't even have to look at the title. I know that that's what the video is about. So it's another way that you can be found and it's going to help you it's going to help people who are looking for those topics are going to click it based on your thumbnail. Now, one more that I have is the timestamp. You've seen my video where I talked about that a couple times, but this is something I've just started doing lately. And I really, I've, I've watched some videos about the importance of it. I've got a video above to show you how to do it, but think about it. Sometimes when you go to search, you you might have something pop up where the timestamp a video will pop up and it'll say oh this this video answers your question but it answers it around three minutes and 20 seconds that's a timestamp notice here i have this all laid out i go through my video and i literally put down keywords about that part of the video so it's just that many more opportunities that i have that i can be found so here it is um already posted and you can see these timestamps are here, but let's say somebody's looking for um, adding an intro to the timestamp. Maybe they already know what a timestamp is, but they just want to know about the intro part. When they Google that, my video might pop up right here at three minutes and 10 seconds where they can get that question answered. So it's pretty cool. So not everybody wants to watch the whole video. I know a lot of other YouTubers, I've seen their videos where they say, well, they're not going to do that because they want people to watch the whole video. I don't know about you if you're still here thank you because i know i've been going on for a while but i want my question answered and then i'm going so that's how i am and that's how i assume you would be too so that is the advantage of the timestamp. it's going to help you be searched but it breaks it down in smaller segments and it gives you more opportunity to be found number eight we're almost done and thank you for sticking with me because these are really important things that you need to put into your video but the last one is closed captioning i talked about that a little bit before i don't use it a lot i do use all seven of the other things but closed captioning i know i have been caught up in watching a video because i can see the words at the bottom sometimes i'm in a situation where i can't listen maybe i'm in a meeting or something or you know you're in a situation where you can't have the audio on so you can just sit there and read the closed captioning and still enjoy the video so closed captioning if you want to add it to your video you want to go on the left hand side scroll down here where it says subtitles and then you can add it there this video isn't about how to add them but that is another way that you can help your seo because youtube and google can pick up on the words they can't pick up on the audio i hope this was helpful give me a like give me a comment let me know what you think and i will see you on the next video mm -hmm.